So finding a mate's not always simple. In our world, finding an appropriate mate may take months or even years or more. But for lots of marine animals, they don't worry about all that fuss. They simply dump their eggs and sperm out into the water to reproduce. We can't because our sperm and eggs would dry up. But for animals living in the water, it's an ideal way to reproduce. The only thing you need to worry about is getting the timing right. And often they'll use the lunar cycle, a full moon, to make sure that their eggs and sperm find one another. But lots of marine animals use internal fertilization, sex. Now it's trickier than just getting the timing right. You need to convince a partner to mate with you. Or do you? For some marine animals that mate on land, like the elephant seal, courtship is not so important. The female elephant seals haul out of the ocean to use a few favoured beaches to give birth and raise their pups. And because the females crowd together on these beaches, the male can get access to mate with lots of females. A lucky male can mate with as many as 200 females in the one year. However, the males need to wait until the females are ready, but this won't happen until she's raised her pup, which will take her around six weeks. So the males come ashore before the females arrive, at least two weeks before. When they come ashore, they'll stake out a territory on the beach, and ideally they'll get a region where lots of females congregate. But only a few males get this opportunity, so the males fight to win the best real estate, the area that'll attract the most females. Males stay ashore for at least two months, and they can't leave their territory, so they can't go to sea to feed or even cool themselves down while they wait for their opportunity with the females. And when fighting, males rock high, metres into the air, and they thump down their three-ton bodies down upon their rivals. They've got canines long and sharp, ripped chunks of flesh from their opponents. The winning males are called beach masters. And once they've established their territory boundaries, the male colony stabilises. The males vocalise and display to one another, and neighbouring beach masters even recognise and don't fight with one another. In fact, they may even band together to fight off an intruder, a stranger trying to muscle in on their territory. Now the beach masters wait for the females to arrive. So they'll guard their patch of beach and any female that lumbers ashore to take up residency in their territory. The females give birth to just the one pup, and they'll stay ashore until they've raised and nursed that pup. But they won't leave their pup's side. Their pups are vulnerable to being squashed by the enormous males. Once the pups have weaned, this is the time the females leave and head back out to sea. She needs to return to the sea to feed, and this is when she becomes sexually receptive. And this is the time the beach masters have been waiting for. It's now that they pounce on the females, pinning them down to mate with the much smaller females. The males are wait ashore until all females in their territory have gone. So for the male elephant seals, there's no elaborate courtship display. Here being enormous and aggressive means a male can hold the best real estate, the area on the beach where he has access to the most females. Winning and then holding these regions favoured by the females means that he can mate with more females and so far the more pups, passing into the next generation his competitive advantage of being enormous and aggressive. But it's a different story for marine animals that mate in the ocean. Mating in the fluid marine environment means that agile females can swim away from amorous males. Males can no longer simply overpower the fertile females. So for marine animals where mating in the water, sexual attraction is vital. And now males tend to have elaborate courtship behaviours. A lovely example is the male Japanese pufferfish. Although the males are tiny bland little fish, they make the most extraordinary underwater castles. Males use their artwork to attract and win a mate. The males carve perfect circular sandcastles up to a two metres wide, and they decorate them with intricate designs, repeating patterns of ridges and grooves. The structures themselves are beautiful, but it's even more remarkable that they make them by flapping tiny fins. The males move enormous quantities of sand on the ocean floor, and when he's finished, He'll decorate his sandcastle with shells, placing a single shell on the crest of each ridge of the inner circle. Female pufferfish come by to inspect his work, and if she likes his artwork, she'll mate with him and lay her eggs in the centre of his sandcastle. Perhaps the more elaborate the sandcastle, the more likely he is to attract not one, but several females. The next season, he'll need to make a whole new sandcastle. 
So depending on how available the sexually receptive females are to the males seems to influence the male's courtship behaviour or lack of it. Where it was easy for the males to access and overpower lots of females, they don't bother with courtship. They spend more time fighting and displaying to other males. Whereas where the females were much harder to get, like the picky female pufferfish, the males need to try a whole lot harder.